Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are watching this out there on the World Wide Web. This is Jeremy Geelan for Syscon TV. I'm here at 10th Cloud Expo, Cloud Expo New York, with Jim Doherty from Surtees Networks, which means I'm going to be actually getting the elevator pitch on Surtees because I'm not entirely up to speed, Jim, on what you do. <laughs> Let's go right to the top. Right. We, the 65,000 foot view. Okay, so at a very high level view, what we do is we do network encryption for data in motion. Uh, and that's been around for a long time, obviously, with IPsec and setting up encryption tunnels. And really what we bring to the table is we have figured out a way to do network encryption without creating point-to-point -point tunnels. And that has profound implications on the performance of the network because there used to be a significant trade-off between having security via encryption and having your network be any-to-any -any and, and highly resilient, highly available, and being able to prioritize uh, latency-sensitive traffic and, and, and the like. So what we were able to do is eliminate the tunnels without watering down the encryption. It's all standard space. So we can encrypt data over any infrastructure or a combination of infrastructures and where we're, the reason we're here at the cloud show is that we've recently announced the ability to actually do this in an infrastructure cloud as well. So you read all these surveys where you know, the number one concern about adopting cloud technologies is, is the concerns around security, and legitimately so. What we've been able to do is take any cloud and turn a public or private or shared cloud into a cryptographically isolated cloud where the clients, the infrastructure client, owns the policies and keys. So imagine if you had your own private encrypted cloud that you could utilize and gain all the efficiencies. Now we can apply that over any cloud infrastructure, and we're talking about infrastructure as a service, so what the enterprise and organization would use as a, as a proxy for, for their infrastructure, you typically hear this as cloud bursting or, or big data as opposed to software as a service where there's a person checking their bank record. So on the back end of that, the, 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 the big networks, you can get all the efficiencies of the cloud, but it's secure via encryption and ongoing authentication that you maintain control of even over the provider's network. Is it true to any extent? We heard the CTO of the CIA yesterday saying in, in many ways, and he then enumerated them, the cloud is more secure. It's more recent technology. That was one of his points, but there were all sorts of other ones. Do, it, do, would you corroborate that to, to some extent? You can offer more security in a cloud-based environment? I, I, I actually disagree with, with, the, with the notion that it's secure. Really what he's talking about is this, this concept of security by obscurity. Because it's complex, because it's there, uh, that it's, you know, it's hard to get at. No one will figure it out. Right, and, it, and, it's, and it's, it's nonsense, right? The, 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 the bad guys, you know, they may lack a moral compass, but they don't lack technical chops. They are very, very technically savvy. And they're share, they share their information, they're collaborative, they tend to be ahead of the game. They're running a multi-billion dollar black market business and they're going to find the data. They're going to get to it because it's what they do. They're, they're in a lot of ways, they're smarter than, you know, uh, perimeter defense is exceptionally difficult, right? Because you have to be right 100% of the time. I can probe an attack and I only have to be right once and I can automate a lot of those attacks. So this, this whole idea that, you know, MPLS, which is a, you know, a private network or, you know, the cloud, privacy is not the equivalent of security. Now there was a time when those were, almost equal you know, concepts because it was the data was difficult to get at, it was hard to consume, you would have been conspicuous taking it, and more to the point, there was nobody to sell it to. But now with stolen data being you know, an economy unto itself, it's an asset that you need to protect. And, and logical segmentation is not secure. Virtual privacy is not the same as actual security. If you want to make sure, and ensure that your data is actually secure, you need to do something to it beyond you know, giving it a label or making it fuzzy. You have to actually protect it. We're talking about data-centric security, not obscurity and hope they don't catch you. Now, from what you're saying, I'm not going to put words into your mouth, but you must be looking at companies then that feel secure knowing that that is just poppycock. What, what do you do? You can't knock on their door and say, guys, you need us. It sounds too cheesy. How do you get them to see that they need to pass through this kind of audit that you're talking about of, of, of you know, how secure they really are? It, it, it's, it's difficult, um, you know, to be sure. And, and, you know, we're not, as odd as it sounds, we're not really in the convincing business. Uh, you know, there are enough 
uh, people out there who come to this conclusion by themselves are going to adopt these technologies and, and the next breach headline, they're not going to be on it. Uh, we also have organizations like the Cloud Security Alliance, and, and they've done something really great from our perspective. They had a best practices for cloud security, and, and their 2.1 version of their best practice said that data should be protected even within the cloud provider's network. Protect is a soft word, right? It, it's, it's not very bold. In their 3.0, they changed that word to encrypt. Their best practice is to encrypt data even within a cloud provider. Quite system. specifically. So you know that's that's useful, usable information. Uh, but again, we're we're not in the in the convincing business. But but a nice validation nonetheless. It, it is. But you know, even if you do a, a logical experiment, I actually had this conversation with a, a guy that runs security for a hedge fund, and and this wasn't necessarily cloud based, but he was talking about the network. He uses a a, a private service provider, and he said, oh, they're 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 fine. So we just did a little thought experiment based on how much money he spends against his insider threats. And it's significant, you know, money per employee. Well, look at a service, pro the two main service providers in the US, I won't say their names, but in aggregate they have half a million customers, or, or employees rather. We'll just say 10% of them have the technical capability to, you know, get at the data that's yours, if they were so inclined. So we're down to 50,000. Let's say 10% of all their employees are in the, you know, the New York Metroplex from Boston to Washington, where you know, a lot of the data centers are. We're down to 5,000 people now who have the wherewithal to get your data and they're physically located there. All they have to do is tap a line and you can't ever detect it. Are you willing to bet that none of them have a gambling problem? That none of them got caught, you know, no, doing it's something. It's a could, fair point. If 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 I'm going to hack a network, and remember, these guys are businessmen. They're not nice people, but they're savvy business people. Do I hire a, a phalanx of engineers to break multiple perimeters of defense to get to your server when you're sending data in the clear over a link that goes under the street that I can physically get to, or that I can find some guy who's got some money problems and give him, you know, a couple thousand dollars cash and sniff a line and never be detected, or so. You know, this idea of privacy starts to fall apart pretty quickly, uh, and, and I always get the, well, it's not very probable. Well, on a big enough scale, improbable events become inevitable. If you're not protecting your data, you're going to, you know, chances are you're going to be one of the ones that get burned or could be burned, as opposed to physically securing the data, actually securing the data, and, and knowing that it's secure, as opposed to hoping no one catches you. Now, if this nightmare scenario, so eloquently phrased by Jim Doherty, is scaring you, go to, how do we find you, certisnetworks.com. Oh my goodness, if I were you, I would be going very soon. Jim, thanks so much for talking with us. Thank you for having me. And thank you for following along out there on the somewhat less safe than I thought World Wide Web. Thanks so much, Jim.